I'm Laura Rainwater. I'm with the pastors at Parker United Methodist Church. And I've been reflecting on the last few years. My social media accounts have told me that three years ago, life was very challenging and life changed for us all. In early 2020, we had heard about the coronavirus. It eventually was renamed COVID-19. And we weren't really worried, or at least I know in Cheyenne, we weren't worried so much about it until we started hearing the stories of infections in Washington State and Oregon and New York City. And at first, it didn't seem like people were worried, but then all of a sudden, some of our officials, some of the global health officials started to get worried, and we started to worry, especially since our officials in the world usually try to calm down the hysteria. And that's not what happened at all. They started making dire predictions. And if we think about it, or if we look back, some of their predictions either came true or were worse than they predicted. I just looked today and across the world sent, uh, with COVID-19, nearly 7 million people have died. Over 1 million people have died in our country um, in the last three years because of COVID-19. Um, numbers that we heard but we just couldn't imagine would possibly happen three years ago. With all of this uncertainty, with all of this fear, with this, this disease that nobody knew how to handle, nobody really knew how it was spread, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of worry. And leaders, like religious leaders and school districts and government officials, they put close sign on all of the public gatherings until they figured out, until we knew what safe really meant. For the first few weeks, everybody kind of said, well, this is what we're going to do to make sure that everybody's safe. But as time went on, the struggle started happening. There was a real tension, a real struggle between keeping people safe and allowing people to stay connected by gathering together. So as the closed signs stayed on the doors of churches and schools and public spaces and even some of the stores, um, we didn't know how to handle it. It was a struggle. Yes, Zoom and YouTube and, and other things kind of were implemented so that we could worship together, we could still be connected together. How many of you had happy hours with family or friends across the country? Or, or we know our students had to do school online and there were advantages and a lot of disadvantages with that. Um, but as I told my um, church in Cheyenne in March of 2020, I said as the religious leader, as the faith leader for this faith community, I don't know that I could have handled it if staying open had allowed one person to get sick and one person to die. That was the real pressure that I felt as the leader of that church. And it was difficult. Uh, like I said, for the first few weeks, people kind of said, this is what we're going to do. But then as time went on, the struggles became more real and even more different. And the fears kind of morphed in many ways. I could go on and on, and you all have your own stories that you could share. But what I can say is that the pandemic lingered. It went on and on. Um, you could look back and say a year later, things were not much better. A year after that, things were slightly better. And even today, uh, there's not the same fear. There's not the same worry. We know that we have um, doctors and nurses and medical people that know how to treat it. And there's just a lot of reasons why it... It's just not the worry that it had to be or continues to be. It doesn't need to be that, that thing. But yet, we can reflect on that tension between public safety, personal responsibility, and the very real need for social connections. Um, even our educators are saying that's what our kids lost during the time when they were being safe at home, but they lost some real educational opportunities that aren't just about what's on the book, not just what's in the book or what's on the test, um, but through the interactions with others. Like I said, you have your story to tell. I have stories to tell. This is my third church during this pandemic. The pandemic is pretty much over, but yet we're still trying to live after it. We're still trying to figure out who we are. And I still hear in the world, not necessarily in our church, but these competing priorities um, that were never really settled. 
And I know for this church, for Parker United Methodist Church, it, it was a difficult time, just as it was in churches all over. I'm not going to revisit that controversy. You have your own stories. But I just wanted to acknowledge that three years ago was very difficult. It was very worrisome. The struggle was real. And the struggle continued way longer than we could have predicted then. It was a tender time, and it changed us. It changed how we view ourselves and maybe sometimes how we view others or how we view our world. So three years ago, we, we said we would stay in and we would take care of one another so that we could let the pandemic pass so that we could get back to normal. The question is, what is normal? Our church, as in all churches, we want to get back to normal, whatever that might be. Um, but is normal what happened in 2019, 2009, 1999? Our church and many other churches, um, those were the times that we seemed to thrive. You know, I know Parker, in two, in, by 1999, had moved to a new location. By 2009, was talking about a new sanctuary to be added. Um, we want to go back to normal when our education classes were overflowing, when there were more youth than we could imagine, where there were families and there were people of all ages, when we had Easter services out the ear, um, when we had so many Christmas Eve services, there weren't enough chairs for everybody. What is your idea of normal, whether it's school or whether it's church? Our idea of normal is often based on a perception of what used to be and what we long for. It's not a bad thing, but it's something we have to recognize. Because um, before 2020, churches were already struggling, already in decline. Um, and when COVID hit, it just accelerated the decline. We aren't as big as we used to be. There aren't many that are. Um, we, I could point you to some articles that explain a lot of this. It's been happening for the last 30, 40, 50, 60 years. Sometimes we see it, sometimes we don't. But the truth is there's not really a normal to get back to. Instead, we have to look forward. We have to claim who we are today. And we have to believe and trust that God is working through us. We are still God's holy people. We are still the church that can share the good news of Jesus Christ to our world, to our young people, to our older people, to our single people, to our married people, to people that don't know if they want to be in relationships. There is a message that we have to share. And sometimes it's with our words, but very often it's with our actions. The truth is that, that we have something that we have experienced and we can share with others. And that's kind of what was, has been living with me the last few days as I, I think about our worship service this past Sunday when we looked at the story in John about the woman in the well, the woman at the well. You know, we, um, it's a familiar story. We've, we've heard it. We thought about it. Um, but what really I think we take home with us or we keep in our forefront, in our thoughts, is that she was thirsty she didn't know what she was thirsty for. And Jesus offered her living water, water that would give her eternal life, water that would spring forth and bubble up for all of eternity. Where is that woman today? Are we that woman? I don't think she knew what she was thirsty for. She just was doing her normal daily activities and her life was changed with this one encounter. Her life was changed. Our lives are changed when we encounter Jesus. You see, Jesus, and this is what I tried to think about as I was sharing on Sunday, is that Jesus meets us where we are at. Whether we're worried, whether we're afraid, whether we're longing for the good old days, whether we're uncertain about the future, whether we wonder about ourselves, whether we wonder whether we deserve the grace and peace and love that is offered to us. Jesus comes to us and offers us that living water that transforms us, transforms our lives, transforms our hearts and our spirits, and he meets us exactly where we're at, not based on any assumptions, but he crosses those boundaries. Remember, Jews were not supposed to talk to Samaritans, 
perhaps a single man was not supposed to talk to a woman. I don't know. But yet he went to her. He healed her. And her life was changed. Over the past three years, I think we have wondered who we are. Um, during the COVID pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, we had to change the way we did things. Um, we may not have been able to meet in person, but we had to figure out new ways to be the community, the body of Christ, um, to gather virtually online or in Zoom meetings or whatever it was. I know that you had worship outside when it was warm weather. I think you even had worship outside when it was cold weather. Um, and I know that um, the pandemic caused most of our churches to do something new, which is to move online. Um, and just imagine how many, do you know how many people are being affected each Sunday because we continue to worship both in person and online. When I'm the online pastor, we have between um, 20 and 40, sometimes 50 people worshiping with us at the exact same time that we have 200 people in the sanctuary just in the nine o'clock service. But we had to do something different. We had to share this love of Christ, this love that Christ has for us, that Christ has for the world in new ways. Maybe it was in sharing some of the resources. I'm seeing some of those pictures of empty, uh, empty shelves in grocery stores or people not having toilet paper because we all kind of went crazy and started hoarding everything. Our church, our churches realized that we had something to offer during that difficult time. And we've continued to do that. We continued to offer real assistance to people who were in need. Um, we continued to figure out ways to help support families, especially parents and guardians that had kids with them at all times. That we did that because of Christ who lives in us and reaches out. We started being church in a new way. And we continue to be church in a new way. We're not going to go back to the way it used to be. There are certain things that we will continue to do that we can learn from our past. But God is pushing us into the future. How is the Spirit whispering into our ears to go out into the world, to make disciples, to share the Spirit, to share the good news, much like that woman at the well did? You see, the woman at the well, her life was transformed. But other lives were transformed because she took that message and she went back to the people, maybe the people that ignored her. But she went and she told them about this Jesus that knew her. She told them about the Messiah that had come. And when they encountered him at her recommendation, their lives were changed. It's a snowball effect. How is God transforming us? Who is it we are called to reach out to? What are the new ways we can minister to families with children, families with youth? We can worship, we can minister to the youth themselves or to young adults, to singles, to married, to those dating, to those that are aging. We already have ministries that help um, of people of, across a, the variety, the spectrum of circumstances. But yet God continues to move through us. God is not done with us yet. Instead, we are a new church. We are a new church every Sunday when we have new people gather. We are a new church every Sunday when we have people gather in different ways. We are a new church every week when we have new people visiting, new people participating, new people teaching Sunday school classes and educational classes, and sometimes new people coming into our church for the first time through those classes or through our choir or through our handbells or, or whatever activity we have. And we can Continue to reach out and be a new church as we reach out to seek our cares with our food uh, collection that we did recently are the ways that we continue to support Parker Task Force with those Easter baskets. Oh, they're so beautiful in the church office. We continue to support missions and ministries, local, state, national, and across the globe. God continues to work through us. We're not going back but we're moving into the future that God has for us. May Christ continue to be the foundation for all that we say, all that we do, all that we are, both as individuals and as a community of faith, especially as we love God and we love our neighbors. I'm excited to be at this church, looking forward to what 
God has in store for us. May we all go in peace, friends. Amen.